Hi guys, welcome. Can you let me know if you can hear me and if you can see okay? I'm gonna make a quick adjustment to uh, my setup and then we'll get started. All right, I just want to be able to see your comments, so I'm trying to make sure that my setting is going to let me do that. All right. Hi, Nan. Hi, Flo. Hi, Suzette. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Joyce. Okay, let's get started. Hi, everybody. How's your week this week? I am very excited. We're going to play again. So I know that some people um, don't watch the long arm live because we've started doing that on the second Sunday. Some people do, even though they don't have long arms. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure that people know that this week is essentially part two and last week, I did some demo of Donna McCauley's Edge to Edge sampler set. And in particular, I showed a lot of information really about the winding ways. Um, let's just see if we can do that real quick. So I use this on the long arm, very easy to use. You're just rotating it around. The directions are really simple. And it's a great way to quickly get a very simple edge to edge design if you need that. But we're gonna focus on the templates that we didn't really showcase last week here on the domestic machine. So we are gonna pre predominantly be looking at this little cute skinny ribbon candy. Look how cute that is. Oh, I love it, right? So it's very small, it's about two and a half, I guess, this way, and pretty skinny. And I have to say, honey's not here today, so I'm on my own. So if I'm dawdling around or something like that or missing a question, you'll know what's happening. He's not here. And then this is the curvy diamond. We're going to start out with this one. And let me tell you something important about it real quick. It has great reference lines. I want to make sure that you recognize that as a diamond, it is not a square. It's taller one direction than it is another direction. So that's really important because it's not symmetrical in the sense of the length and the width are not the same. I mean, it, it has some symmetry for sure, but you're not going to be able to use it like you would a square. So you'll have to be aware of that. And it does kind of make like the cathedral oval in the center for some of the designs. So we're going to play with this one first. I did make a border that I know it will fit in. So I'll just show you that real quick. I got, you know, we always get asked to um, work on a quilt. So I kind of have some scrap that I had available and I decided I was just going to make something that could showcase what we're doing here. So let me get in a little bit closer for you. Now, I have a center line that I've marked on here. This width right here is five inches, five. Does it have to be five? No, the design itself is four and a half at its tallest right here. The longer length of it is four and a half. So by marking the center, what I did is ensure that the same amount of space will exist on the top and the bottom. That way I don't have it like, oh, it's touching down here, but then there's a gap on this side. I'm gonna align it all the way down on that center line as I go. When I start the first one, I'll actually put my needle right here in this stitch line right there, and we're gonna work this way, and then whatever I get, on the end, that's what I get. I don't care. I'm not worried about it. So as per usual, I absolutely adore my Slow Steady Grid Glider. I've got that on. 
Mine was polished this week because I had several classes. So I was definitely, you know, using it and making sure that it's all in good, perfect condition. Very easy to move everything. Let me see if I can get that thread. It's very ornery. I can't get it. Oh, come on. There we go. Don't use your scissor button. It's just so hard to get that little thread up when it's tucked in there and way down deep. Okay, so let's pull this forward, line it up, and then pretty much you can see right away that five, that this is going to be perfectly fitting in there in terms of the template opening. It's right along this line, right? So we'll get a quarter inch gap on each side. So this template, you can do it two ways. Because it has to kind of go around all the way in order to complete the shape, you could sew just these right here on just the top or the bottom, and then you can come back. I am way too lazy for that, so I'm not doing that. Once I line up this template and it's not moving around, I just want to go for it. So there's no way I'm going to do the top and then come back and do the bottom. What I can do is once I get this aligned and I line up the next one like this, just pull it forward, line it straight up. Now this first shape that we did is totally done. Okay, but I have double stitching on this side and single on that side. I could double it up again and do thirds on one side because the double stitching definitely, I think, makes a, a notable difference in how the thread shows up. But what I'm going to do is I'll double stitch on this side. And then on the next one, I'll double stitch on the other one. And that will create at least some visual balance between the two. So again, I'm looking right here. The edge of the template is right inside the boundary. And because I want to double up on the left side, this time I'll go the opposite way. And that way I'll be right in the path to go double when I get to the other side. I won't have to change directions. Although you can change directions, there's nothing wrong with that if you want to. Okay, so then here, just go this way. And then it offers kind of like a little curvy wave, you know, the arcs will go alternating. And then we'll just go this way and we'll keep going. Tuck it right up into the top. This is a nice big shape. It quilts up pretty quickly. It's really easy to line it up, which I love. And I love curves. So the fact that it's a curvy diamond makes me love it even more than a regular diamond. Okay. So notice that my quilt sandwich is not rotating at all. I don't have to do anything. Just keep everybody straight and let the fabric sandwich move in the direction that it needs to. So this time we'll go down so we can double up on this side. Okay. So that center line is very important to me in keeping the design nicely balanced right in this border so that I don't have too much to one side because it's actually bigger. I selected the size of the border on purpose. If I have a border that's four and a half inches, which is exactly the height of this template right here, what would happen if I maybe stitched my border a little bit too tight? What do you think would happen? Then I have too much crowding right here. Typically when I'm doing a border, I want whatever the template size is, I want the border to be at least a half of an inch bigger. That gives a little breathing room so that the edges of the template, if they stitch down a little bit more than you expect, they're not going to stitch into your seam allowance and cross over to your outer area. Uh, let's see. I see we got a couple questions. Somebody said, let me see, Nancy. Side, then back. So, okay, so Joyce, yes, I was commenting on that earlier. There is certainly more than one path to do it, right? So I could do all of the top and then I could do 
all of the other side. I could go back and I can line everything up and it should line up. The template's not changing size. I just am too lazy to do that. So if your perfection quotient wants single stitch on this side, single stitch on this side, go ahead, do it. Whatever works for you. There's nothing wrong with that. It should work very easily. It's not a problem at all. For this design, I'm gonna show you how we can kind of create some design intention with what we're doing. And I'm not sure what side I'm on now, I forgot. Okay, I think this one has to double up on this side right here. All right, so we'll double it up and then I'm gonna show you something interesting that we're gonna do with this. So that wasn't hard, right? I mean, basically we're done. So I'm just gonna tack it right here. I'm actually gonna cut it because we need the thread free. So I'm just gonna hold that, put my foot right back down where I left off and try to get my needle right in the exact stitch line. Once I release my foot and the needle, all of that, there's a little bit of a loop there that I can pick up and there's that bobbin thread right there and I can cut it off then everything is tacked in and there's no loose threads hanging around anywhere. Okay, and thread is in the trash, not just everywhere. Okay, let me show you what we got. Love it, I think it looks awesome. Look how cool that looks and see it fits so nicely right in there. I didn't plan that, but I am glad it fit nice. <laughs> okay. So this is something very simple. I could fill in these diamonds. I can create maybe an echo. This template, this would be something where you would have to move your template out like this in order to get an echo. And you could use your half inch space, for example, with your spacing gauge, and you could echo on the inside. Right? You can just put this on there like that and like that. And then we could do an echo and you would stop at the middle and you'd have to reposition each side if you wanted to do it that way. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna add an entire second line of stitching. And you can, I think, see that this is the double stitching here, double stitch here, 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 like that. So there's one line that is continuous that just goes with that double stitching. When we do this second row, we're gonna do an offset and let's see, let's put our stitching line discs up and decide where we're gonna start our offset to. Okay. Right here, this would be that center row, which means that we would align this first row like this. Okay, because this is where we started originally, right with our foot right there. So this is the center position if we're gonna do an offset going that way. I guess we don't need any discs. We'll just go ahead and do that and we'll position our foot. This is when I wanna make the design a little bit more dense. I've got a lot of open space right in here and if I put another row in there, it's gonna alleviate some of that and it's gonna make a little bit more quilting distributed better across this so that the border doesn't have any large openings. Plus I think it looks really cool, so let's just set it up. I'll go ahead and I'll sew this one side to side just so you can maybe see an alternate hand position as we go. So when I picked up my thread and I cut my bobbin thread the way I did last time, it left me a nice long bobbin tail so I can just easily pick that up. So there's my bobbin tail right there. I'll line this up right in the seam allowance, try to get my needle right in the allowance, right there. And then just because there is some stitching right in that ditch, I'm gonna go ahead and tack this right now since we're not gonna come back to it. Here, we ended up stitching over that when we doubled up that stitching. On this particular one, we are not gonna be doubling up this side, not at the top, but at the bottom. So the double stitching is here and we're gonna double stitch this one right there. When I line it up, this little opening right down here at the bottom, I need to have that right in the center. So let me see if I can adjust this real quick so we can get a little better angle for you. There you go. I think you can see maybe a little bit more now. On the bottom, 
we're going to line this opening up so that the seam is right in the middle. There's no line right there, so we just want it to be even right there. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and make sure we're right in the center, and let's get stitching. Okay, so right there we're going to get a cool little diamond in the center. Come down to the bottom, right into our seam allowance right there, and back up to the center. Okay, now the double stitching's on this side, so let's scoot it over. Make sure our threads are out of the way so we don't stitch into anything. Get everybody lined up right in the center. There's a very easy reference line right there. And again, we know that the opening in the template should fit perfectly right there. Here, as I look at these reference lines, you, you should have this be a nice, even spacing. Like, you shouldn't have this kind of pulled over like that and looking a little wonky right there. See those white lines? That alignment should make some somewhat of a little symmetrical look right here where those white lines cross over. So a little smushing can be useful if it's not perfect. So let's go ahead and we'll go this way. Up into the diamond, actively change directions. Watch your finger right on this side. That's where you have that needle screw bar that can sometimes be a little biting if you're not careful. So just for comfort, I'm gonna get my fingers in a little bit more. Seemed like I was straining to hold it, so let those grips work for you. Okay. And just stop right when you're in the hook and we'll just scoot it over. Line it back up and this time we'll go this way so that that double stitching is on the bottom. It kind of is like egg and dart. Somebody just uh, commented on that. I think it definitely has a very similar style to egg and dart, but the diamonds are complete and they don't really touch the seam boundary, so they kind of have their own shape, which I like too. What's nice about that is I could make that happen in a larger border, and then I don't have to worry about if it touches the seam or not. It's just its own identity, its own completed shape, so it, it won't matter. So I don't know if you can see, but right there, seems like that's a little bit wonky. It's not a nice symmetry right there, so I'm gonna adjust right here to get that. Just give this a little tug. These are almost cir circular in motion. The shape is very close to like a circle, each of these arcs. And so what can happen when we're doing something like that, it's pretty easy for the quilt to draw up in all directions. And let's see, I can't remember since we're talking, what side did I do my double on? Okay, let's go back the other way since I did it on the bottom last time. That's what happens when you're talking. <laughs> you can't remember anything. All right, and we'll just keep on going. We'll fill this up so nice and give a little tug just to get this nice and even right there. So we double stitched on that side, so now we'll double stitch on the bottom side. I just stitched a little piece of lint onto my quilt. <laughs> Hopefully he'll come off later. So in the, if this is my boundary, I'll just keep going until I'm basically in the batting, right? I'm not gonna stop right here, even though this is close to the end. Let's just put one last one, try to line it up. We have this alignment here, the center line here, and try to you know get it even at the top as well. So both of the top and the bottom can help us make sure that we have a nice, good, even stitching. And then whatever we end up with, it can just be something on the other side, right? Okay, so you saw the original design, which was the singles. I'm gonna cut it right now and we'll take this out and then I'll show you. Now we have much more density in that design. So that border is pretty wide and although I liked the single diamond, I don't know that I would want to have that small amount of quilting. I would want a little bit more in that space. Okay, all right, let's turn it this way so you can see it really good. 
Doesn't that look awesome? It's so pretty. What a gorgeous design. So I think Donna did a great job with this one. I really think that this shape is so pretty and very, very easy to line up, very flexible. So this would be something that you could do in a border. You can do the single, you can do the double, and what we did is we are offsetting by half. So if you were at home and you didn't have my easy little center reference line like this, and you do the first diamonds, what you can do is just put a line right in the middle, right? You see right there where they're touching, and this point and this point are also the alignment. So you could put your straight edge right in the middle like that, line it up, and then you can just draw your center line right down the middle to do that offset. That's the offset one right there. We did these first, and then I can align right in the center then to put that one in the middle. So very, very easy to get this really pretty design. And this would be great for Templi, for example. If you had this, you could easily cut these little ice cream cones. You could cut these little diamonds out. And if you did actually have your border at four and a half, you could potentially cut you know, some of these out. So a lot of flexibility there and also a lot of potential for some free motion. I mean, I could really see me right here filling in these to give some more definition and leaving these little diamonds here to pop up. So a lot of great options with that one. So let's go ahead and use some of this larger space here and we'll put a little something else in here. This template could easily be used to do some kind of edge to edge style. So we'll line up this very first one and again, we'll just work our way out, okay? So let's get lined up. I'm lining up right here on this line and I'll start with this and I'll go down that way. Just finish that out down to the bottom. There's so many different paths that you can travel with this template if you want to. Um, I'm just gonna show one, but like I said, if you miss something, like if you miss a row, sometimes I've, I've been drawing them and I'll be like, wait, I skipped that row, what happened? Pretty easy to come back and fill it in if you want to. So we'll line this up right here and try to pray that my line here is nice and squared up, right? Because if this is not squared up, that could be trouble. So you may want to make like your first honesty line and make sure that you can get that in there, but we'll just, we're just going to go with it. Who knows, right? Maybe it's perfect. Maybe it isn't. Okay. So just line that up, get right into your ditch right there, scoot down. This is an example of where we're doing just that half instead of the whole thing. So this would be an example of where you could do the top and then you do the bottom and then you could do it in rows and you wouldn't have any double stitching. So this is kind of an example of that alternate movement method. Okay, so at this point, this is basically in the seam allowance right here. So I'm actually gonna travel right back to here. Okay, and then what I can do, let me turn it and I'll give you two options and then I'll let you guys decide. Actually, we'll do, we'll just go this way. Okay. I'm gonna do one thing to show you an idea of how you can double check that you're aligned nice and straight. We wanna make sure that this aligns squared up with our boundary and this is where the tail left off. I'll actually put a little dot there just to show you right there is the very last stitch as this comes in. You can see the little angle right there and it's squared up right there. So I can just make a reference line right here. This was what I meant by an honesty line just to make sure that we are gonna go straight. So I don't have any markings down here to line this up. All I have is the line at the back. I don't have any references or anything like that. If I want this to be squared up to this line, I can just put a straight edge right there and I can line up the edge like that. That's gonna make sure now that this is running straight so that when I do this next one and I start going that way, 
they should line up. So that's just a really simple way that you can help yourself if you need to. All right, so let's just do this one. And again, I told you I'm lazy, so I am. I'm gonna do the whole shape. And if I wanna double up to get back to where I want to, that's what I'm gonna do. I won't have to double up as many times for this one because I already have one of the legs already done. So right here, I'll just go right into there and I'm just gonna come back. Now that I'm squared up with that shape and I got that nice alignment, let me show you what should happen. I am praying right now, can you tell? <laughs> It'll work out. All right, I want this now to be aligned right in the center. Now I have that reference line so that I can go this way. And that wasn't complicated. That was just a really quick, easy little reference line that we created just to make sure that we can connect our dots. So I'm looking right here. I'm right in this line and down on the bottom, that little opening that we mentioned, this little slit needs to be right in the middle. We should have the same amount of space on either side. Now, all of these should line up and I should be able to stitch right in at that quarter inch right there. So I think I'll give myself a little smush right there to get in there. Okay, so if I wanted to double it up, this is how it would have to go. I'd have to go a lot further to go back and forth to get these done. Okay, Just so I can follow any path. This thread is pretty neutral here, so it's not really gonna be very showy if I double it up. In some places, if your thread is really bold or the color change is really defined, then that might be something you might wanna worry about because that would make a difference. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm lined up and I should be able to come right in here. This is exactly how we lined it up and I should fit right in there just perfect. So this is how we can do rows for this design. And we'll go ahead and we'll close this edge and we'll come back down to the bottom. Okay, and the same thing, if we just scoot it down and we can do the same thing, we can make sure that this is straight. This should line up right on the intersection. There are two reference lines. Let me see if I can put a little card under there so you can see the reference line. So right where these come in, you've got this arc and this arc, and that is your needle reference line. So when my foot is in there, basically this seam allowance should be a straight line right through that intersection where those two are. And since I'm right here on the edge, that's what I can use to line up. I can use that intersection right there and I can go back the next direction. So always looking at what you have in order to give you what you want. So I'm holding basically my four corners and notice that my stable tape grips are close to the edge of the template. Okay, so from this position, we wanna go and move forward. So we'll come back over to here. That lets us move that direction. And now we have some reference lines. It sort of seems like it's always that first one that is maybe a problem. So let's see, can you guys see my stitching at all? Let's see if we can get a little shadow on there so maybe you could see it better. Let me adjust this light real quick. How's that? Is that a little bit better? That gives you maybe just a little bit of a shadow on there so you can see the stitching just a little bit better, okay? All right, so let's line it up. We said we were gonna scoot down, so we're in this position right here. The center line now, we have that reference line and we're right on it and it intersects right at that quarter inch. And then I'm just gonna check the bottom and make sure that bottom is aligned as well. Okay, here we go. Connect the dot. I can go any direction. 
I just need to get back to the other side so that I can continue moving. So this would be just like if you were sewing circles and you had to travel one and a half circles in order to advance to the other side. Love it. Let's see. We have to do a little smushing just to get us aligned. I've got a little bit of a reference line right there that I can use and I'm aligned right on the center here. So I have at least two points of reference. I think if you have two, you generally are good. I, I like three, but if I can get at least two, that helps make sure that your orientation won't be skewed. It makes sure that you can kind of connect your dots, get everybody to touch. Okay, and then we'll just go back down to the bottom because that's where our next row is gonna be. So what we're showing you here is how you can actually create this all over fill. Now this is pretty open. So this is a, a like a, a giant egg, but what we'll do is, um, I think we only have like two more rows. We'll go ahead and we'll do the two more rows and then we're gonna add some stitching here so that you can have a little bit of a different design as well. And again, it's all about the density. You know, if you were somebody who loves free motion and you just wanted to put fills in these arcs right here or fills in these diamonds, this would be so fun to do. But maybe that's not your thing. Maybe you want something else. Well then, that would be something that you can do. Just like we have this reference line here and we want it to be straight and squared up, let's put this on here again. We'll align it with that center line that we did before. And let's see if we can get ourselves aligned right there. So we'll have to scoot over one right there. And then try to get this as squared up to it as possible. So maybe we're like one stitch off I'm just gonna go with it, but I'm gonna get this bottom part lined up so it doesn't get further off. It's a little bit not as squared up there as I'd want it to be. It's always fixable, right? It's quilting. It's not brain science. Brain surgery. Feels like brain surgery sometimes though, huh? Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll close that up. And I don't know, did I miss one down there? No, I think we're good. So we'll come back to the middle and that way we can go back the other direction. Okay, and then this is just that resource that we're using just to square it up. So that wasn't complicated either. Um, always, you know, use your tools. If you need reference lines, then you should have them. You should put them on. There's no reason not to. If you feel like that's something that's important, that's gonna help you get what you need, it's totally worth it. Donna Dean, I'm glad you like it. Thank you so much. She said, this is darling. You know what? And it's, it's a nice fill. One of the things that I did with the little sample today is we're using a thread here in this section that pretty much matches. I mean, it's very, very close in color to the existing thread, but we'll still get some good texture. But then we use that same thread over here and look at what we get. We get a lot more show. So it's important to note that the color that you choose is something that impacts your design a lot. And if you just really want that quilting to show, then I would choose a color that is gonna give you a little more value. So again, we're on the edge. I'm looking right here for my little reference lines to end right at the seam line. And I'm right at a quarter inch right here. So I have those two as references. That's gonna make it really easy for us to get that aligned and we'll just keep stitching right into our seam. Connect our dot right there. Close the diamond. And we'll come back down to the bottom. All right, and this will be that last one. And again, we'll line this up right there so that it's right in that seam allowance. And here we can travel outside the boundary if we need to or not. I think it's important to go ahead and sew this side and get your foot here anchored because that is the exact position you need in order to move over. So I wouldn't try to shortcut that. I would use those two width um, positions so that you can do that. So let's go ahead and do one more. 
Let's get it lined up right there, right in the center, and maybe a little smushing so we can get right in there. I think it's a little puffier on this side, can you tell? So this is gonna tell us exactly where we wanna stop right there, and then we'll just keep scooting over. And we'll just line everybody up, getting that quarter inch right there, maybe a little bit of smushing if needed, to get our beautiful little eggs all in one basket. Okay, and so pretty much, I think my edges are not too square, but that's the edge. I'll just kind of scoot over and get out into the batting. So let's go ahead and we'll cut that and then I'll show you that's basically an edge to edge option that you have with this. And I think it's really fun, especially if you wanna put some additional fills in there or maybe you're trying to highlight some cute little embroidery elements if you had those. This would be a fun way to put a little frame around that. So there you go, isn't that cute? Let's turn it this way so you can see a little bit more. So you get this diamond and then you get this oval, okay? So definitely you can see the quilting, it definitely shows out. This is again pretty open, okay? I mean, that's a fist right there. So make sure you're checking that what your batting can allow. Um, Patricia, I, goodness, I can't say your name. Gayevsky, I hope I said it right. <laughs> Patricia Gayevsky asks, how big is this section? I have no idea. I just kind of made with whatever I had. So let's see, bigger than 12, probably another four, maybe about 16 inches this direction from this side to this side. And with about 11 for that section. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. And I wasn't even trying to make it match the template. I was just like, I know that this side is nice and clean and this edge. So I started from here and I just sewed that way. Whatever I got is whatever I got. You don't see the diamond? That's the optical illusion. There's your diamond right there. Okay, curvy diamond. And of course, right now, this is really big. So it predominates. The oval is huge compared to the diamond. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add some more, okay? What we're gonna do this time in order to set this design off, and this is another reason why we were really careful about alignment. If I have this, I aligned at the half like this, right? If I wanna put an offset in there, this is what it will look like. We'll line it up, we'll use the reference lines on the template right there, little smushing again, but we want to be pretty close. And now the offset is gonna be right here. So we're gonna sew right into the middle and go that way. So let's go ahead and we've got it set up and we'll just start doing that. So in your mind, go ahead and make a mental picture of how it looks right now, okay? Actually, you know what? Let's do two rows right here. We'll two, do two with the offset right here and right there and we'll leave the other two blank. That way we'll have a good ability to see the difference between the two spaces. So right up here, I can tell you for sure that it's a little bulkier because there's a little seam intersection right there between all those colors. So when I start, I am gonna put some tacking stitches in there, but I need to be prepared that I'm gonna to have to maybe put a little bit more pressure on the fabric sandwich right there as I start. So let's get these threads all out of the way. Just tuck them back over there, get everybody lined up. I'll have to line up again, but I wanna put some tacking stitches right there in that seam right there so that I can not have to come back to this area. Let's see if we can turn it for a better view. How's, how about that? We're actually gonna be going that way. So I'll try to align it just like this. We're gonna sew down and back to the center and the white reference line here and here, they're aligned right on the existing design. So these white lines right here, those are what are keeping us aligned. And this intersection, again, if the foot is in there, those little white lines come in right at the needle position. So right where the existing stitching is, that's where we want to align that and make sure that we can get right into that position. Okay, 
So it lines perfectly right there. Come back down here, we'll close this and we'll come back to the center. Okay, and then scoot. And now we have all the reference lines that we need. Now that we have multiple ovals already in there, we've got that honesty line. This reference line is perfect. This reference line is perfect. We can easily get all of those in. So let's go ahead and we'll sew the whole thing. I don't like to have to realign multiple times. Every time that I have to realign the template for something like this, I feel like there's a strong potential to have error be introduced and I don't want that. So that's why I don't like to do the top and then do the bottom. I just want to get that shape. Oh, <laughs> did you guys see? I drove a little crazy. I just started swinging way over there. Okay, hug the curve, guys. Make sure you're tucking that. And don't let people talk to you while you're sewing, right? Because that just makes things harder. Okay, so I'm, I'm aligned. I'm right on those white reference lines. I should be able to stitch in perfectly, connecting all my dots. Make sure your foot is hugging those curves on the right side. Okay, it's as you get down into that little neck right there, it can be easy to slip onto the opposite side. So let's go the opposite way this time. We'll go this way. Okay, and we're on the edge, so we'll go to the top, and then we, we need this, and we want to end down here as we line things up. That's where we were going to get down to the next row. So let me make a little adjustment up here at the top because we're looking a little wonky. All right, I'm going to adjust my top because it's not quite squared up there as I want it to be. Right there. It was a little tall. So now that I'm at this position, I'll realign this side to fit perfectly. So he's right on the white line. This will bring me right exactly where I need to be. So you can always do micro adjustments on each side. You don't have to feel like you're constrained as you're working. If one side needs a little tip to go where it needs to, do that, get to your back to your correct side, and then you can align the bottom. So there's flexibility in there as you need it. I'm right on my reference line right here and the quilt's drawing up a little bit this way. So I'm gonna give this just a little tug right there to be able to get this aligned right there at the bottom the way that I want to. And I can still get right into there very nicely. So touch, I'm gonna double stitch this part right here. Okay, so right to that intersection right there and I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna work this way. So remember we said we're just gonna do two rows so I can get these aligned very nicely. And the quilt, again, I, I'm telling you, it is definitely drawing in. I can tell because obviously we just sewed these and they were perfect and now they seem like maybe they're just a little bit skewed and that's because that quilt, that batting is really dense there. So just make a small adjustment and then I can adjust this side and get this side sewn in right there. So I don't wanna make any adjustments in between when I'm sewing, you know what I mean? I don't wanna move this if I'm gonna be stitching back on this. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it right in place. When I get back to that other side, then if I need to make any adjustment, I can. Okay, all right, so let's do the next one. We'll try to get everybody lined up. Looks like I need one more stitch to get aligned right there. Real easy, that just let me tip that just enough so that I can get everybody lined back up. Touch, come down and finish this part. So we double stitched on the bottom for the last one. We'll double stitch on the top for this one. And just stay on the correct side. Make sure your foot is touching all the way. And then we just have one last little guy and we'll line him right up on our seam. And we'll do both sides. We'll stitch up and then we'll stitch down. So close the arc. 
and close the arc on this side. Get ourselves right down into that seam allowance. So right here, I'm just gonna tack this right in the seam allowance, just a few tacking stitches right there. And we'll pull it off. All right, Paula, you're gonna see some diamonds now. There's a lot more of them all of a sudden. Once we do that second, that offset row, I think you really can see them much more and you get a lot more density to your quilting overall. So we'll turn it this way and that way you guys can really see the difference between the two. Let's see if we can change our light a little as well. I'm gonna pull the quilt up and just hold it at an angle so you can see it. Woohoo! Now you can really see it, isn't that pretty? So the set that we're talking about is the edge to edge sampler set. So this one has four different templates. It has a winding way at four and a half. It has this curvy diamond. It has the skinny ribbon candy. And it also has a really cute template called the flourish template, which I absolutely love. So I'll put the thing back up again. This is the template set. So it has, again, this could be edge to edge. Obviously we just showed you, that could be a great classic edge to edge fill. You can have it open, you can have it doubled up. This is offset by half. So when we did the diamonds initially, then we're doing another diamond that is kind of stacked in the middle. So if this is the, the circle part, then that diamond will be right in the middle. So that's an offset of one. Yeah, it's definitely is that orange peel design, Donna, for sure. Um, love that. I think that's very classic, and I love how it looks, and I do think that hers makes it easy to do it. So let's go ahead, and we're going to move on. Let's do some of the ribbon candy. Um, I've got it here in the pink, so we should be able to see it a little bit better, so I might shift my lighting a little bit. So let's cut those threads. Those are all tied off. So the ribbon candy is super cute. Let me pull it out here. It's adorable, so cute. But tiny, very, very cute. This is an important reference line. You want that center line, okay? So you definitely need that. Let me explain that there isn't a reference line on the bottom that goes through this to line it up or that goes through this to line it up. So you have to have a center reference line for wherever your border space is. So we don't care if it's off the edge, we're just gonna kind of start over here. This line is gonna go aligned right on this purple reference line. So we'll do sort of half on, half off. Now, when I made my spacing, look how tight it is. It's just going to fit inside the pink. It's not a quarter inch um, that exists between the border. It's less than that. It's probably about, I don't know, maybe just a little bit bigger than an eighth, I think. And as I go, I want to keep this aligned right on the center. There's a lot of really great reference lines right here that are going to let us do this very, very easily. So I'm just going to take a few tacking stitches right here because I'm gonna end up coming up onto the quilt. So when you start out, go ahead and just go a little bit easy, don't go crazy. I'm right on the edge there, so I don't want the foot to go on and off the fabric and be all crazy. Let's get that first one in there, and just come right into that little foot hook right there. This design is just walk it down, and now I've got the little remnant of the existing stitch line lined right up on the ribbon back there. And I should have that same amount of space on this side and this side, and that's what my little alignment is giving me. When I start out, let me turn this a little. I want you to see, this has like a little squared edge right there that the foot is gonna go around. So when you're going around, don't try to race those first couple stitches. Just go easy right there and keep the foot right along that existing piece. And if you line everything up, 
your ribbons are gonna touch perfectly. Okay, so we just did one set. I'm touching right there, perfectly right there, and I'm touching right there. And then just scoot it over right into the same hook and line up right on the reference lines and make sure your center line is aligned. And again, right here at the top, when you're in that foot hook, as you come out of that little divot, just go a little slowly, okay? This design is pretty small, but right at the end and at the beginning, it's coming into that hook, you have to go around this little piece right here. So I don't think there's any benefit to racing around that curve. It doesn't make for a nice, pretty smooth look. So just give yourself time and start smoothly. Start with a nice, even speed. And then as you come in here, just go around that curve nice and easy. If we don't go around nice and e even at, at the little foot hook right there, you get a little jog, right? So there's no benefit in my mind to rushing that. Just line your lines up, get everybody in their place, check your center mark as well. Right there, that should be that quarter inch that you need. So we'll just go around here real easy. And here we go. Just like anything, as you do this more and more, you'll get a little bit faster, you get a little bit easier. Mine is gonna fit in this perfectly. I left a little bit of a gap space intentionally so that it wouldn't go right to the very, very edge of the border. So when I cut this, I cut it at three and a quarter on purpose. If I had cut it right at three, this is two and a half, and basically this border would touch all the way to the edge so that potentially if I had a bad seam allowance, my little border might sew out of that. So again, this is the same thing that we talked about before where I encourage maybe to have just a little bit bigger space for your border than your template is. Oh, I got a little crazy stitch right there. Not sure why. We'll just fix it now. I'm not coming back to fix it later, right? Okay, and we'll just keep lining these up. Nice and easy, right there around that curve. You can quickly see that that quarter inch is perfect. So let's go maybe a little bit more at speed. I still like to start right at the first right there, go easy around that little curve right there. Okay, once you're in the big ribbon, the big part of the dip, then you can sew a little faster. But right there when you start out, that's where you want that nice, easy touch, right here. Right there as you go around. Nice and easy. And then you can go faster. Ooh, roller coaster. Ugh, oh, halt. Okay, so this is pretty fun. It's pretty relaxing. It's not a complicated design. It's really easy to line it up and goes pretty quickly once you get the hang of it. That center line is your friend. I would tell you that when you're doing it, I wouldn't not have that center line. I always want that because that's gonna make sure that that design is nicely centered in the space. Okay, so I'll show you what we got so far. What do you think? Love this color on the pink. It's awesome, isn't it? So pretty. All right, let's see. What questions do we have? Rotator cuff injury. Somebody said they're recovering from rotator cuff surgery. That is painful. My husband had that and it was not pleasant. Somebody asked me about my thread. I am using 40 weight thread. It's a polyester thread and it is from Exquisite, which is produced by Dime. Really love it. I used it on another quilt this week and it's really, really pretty. So um, let's see, I didn't really see any other questions. I'm gonna go ahead and just sew a little bit more of this real quick before we move on. Um, you guys got the idea, I know, but one of the things to note that Donna does have with the ribbon candy is she has different sizes. So you might find that maybe you want a different size. This is gonna fit really well in a generous three inch border or maybe like three and a half, four inch border. And it doesn't have an echo potential, but like if it's too skinny for your space, you can always put like another line. Like if you had a border, you can just put a little echo line straight across the seam. 
there's always a way to make this fit your border a little better if it's too narrow. It's just that if it's too tight, that's the problem that I don't like to deal with because I think that is really impossible. You know, you can't make the template be skinnier than it actually is. So if we can play with it and it has a good size, if there's excess room, we can deal with that. We just can't deal with it if it's too tight. Okay, so nice, easy rhythm. We'll just keep walking it along right here around that curve, nice and easy. Whee! My aunt lived out in the desert in California, in Apple Valley, and there used to be this road, and we called it the roller coaster road because my dad would drive up to the top of the hill, and as you would come down, you'd be like, whee! Gravity would take over. So that's kind of what you get with this. One of the things that's important when you are sewing that, if that is happening to you, is making sure that you're controlling where your foot is touching. Don't let gravity take over while you're sewing. Okay, nice and easy, pretty relaxing rhythm, and it is gonna look amazing when we're done. We have one more area that we wanna do with this ribbon. So I think I'll just go ahead and I'll just stop right here. I'm gonna leave my threads because I wanna come back to this later. So look at, we can take this off, we can put another template on. She has a thread slot basically right there just to pass that through if you ever wanna take it off. So I'll, I'll come back to this. So I'm just gonna leave my threads. I'm not actually gonna tie them off right now. One of the things I wanna show you in the other space is another idea for how you can use this ribbon. It's pretty small. I'm not sure that I would want to use it for edge to edge, but you could. And I'm gonna show you an idea for how you could do that if you want to. Right now, this is five, we said right here, this border. And this is basically stitching out right at two and a half, okay? I mean, this we said this border's a little bit big, but if this was two and a half, this would fit perfectly. These do fit perfectly right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little ribbon here, and then I'm gonna show you how you can stack it right here and what alignment that you would need. So we'll, rather than just finish this out, we'll just do a couple right here. Just to start out with, very simple, if I can just line it up right on the line. And our needle should go right in this reference line because that's the top. So this will align basically like that. So we'll have a quarter inch space down here. We can check that with our spacing gauge, but our foot is gonna anchor it right here. All right, let's get our template in there too. And I'll just carefully align my needle right in the ditch and take a few tacking stitches to make sure that those threads are anchored right there. So my needle's right in the line. Get those threads back behind there, out of our way. And let's align this right on the seam allowance and right on the seam allowance. So when you're looking at it, again, that little opening right there needs to be evenly split right there on whatever your reference line is down there. And here, you can actually see right where the stitch line would be right there that the ribbon is actually gonna go all the way to that seam line because the reference line right there, it's basically right at the stitch line, almost exactly. Okay, so right into our hook, there's extra, um, there's extra fabric because the seam allowance is pressed up right there. So that's why it's a little bit thick right there. So again, as we line this up, let me show you two things. We already said that the bottom of the alignment is this ribbon should be touching this line. So the reference lines that are on there should basically touch that. Well, by the same token, this should touch the line also. And then we'll have to get our little alignments lined up. So we're checking kind of for both of those things so that when we come around here, we'll touch in the right spot. So right there, nice and easy. Okay, right into that little hook. 
scoot over, and then we'll just keep on going. So what happens if this looks a little big, like he's gonna stitch over the line? I can just kind of adjust it a little bit. Instead of just sewing crazy and just going really fast, if I need to make that adjustment because I see it's gonna stitch into its partner, I'll just make a little micro adjustment myself. What that tells me maybe is that this little allowance that I say is five, maybe it isn't. <laughs> maybe it's not quite a five because it's not lining up as good as I want it to. So we'll just play with it. We'll just make it, make it behave. There's always a way to make the design do a little bit more what you want. So if it's too tight and it's gonna sew in there, I'll just take two or three stitches right in the existing stitch line so that it doesn't cross over the line. And that's again, we talked about, this is now a little too tight for what I wanted. So if we had a little bit more of an allowance, it would be a little bit more flexible for us. But I think what's happening is we're ending up, it's crunching up a lot as we're stitching. So that's why we're getting a little bit of that. So right here, let me show you, we're right in the center. And I can make that slight adjustment at the back so that now he's right on the existing stitch line and this one's lined up a little bit better. That'll help us. It's easiest to make an adjustment like that at the top of the ribbon, right where this little center position is. That's the best place to make an adjustment for any of your designs at any point because that is a place where you can hide it. Once I've made that correction, now it's a little bit easier to get all the rest of these in. They, they're gonna line up much nicer now that I've made that correction because it seemed like it was kind of getting a little bit further off. So right there is where you'd make that adjustment at the top if you needed to. And now it's sewing just, just perfect. Okay, so there's always a way to make things do what you want. If the quilt is not necessarily behaving how you want it to, you can get that correction. Not a big deal. Okay. Uh, I wanted to show you this because I wanted to add one more element in there. I think I may be looking at this sideways. Maybe that's why it looks wonky, huh? Because it's sewing fine. So it must be me. I'm looking at the um, template kind of on an angle. Oh, I'm gonna check that one. That one seems a little wide. There we go. And we'll just come right off the edge. So I'm gonna, again, get this last one in there nice and neat, and then we'll be done. This is the last one. Right off the edge, and just tack this part off. Okay, so I wanna show you how we line up to do that second row. I'm gonna turn this, and you'll be able to see a good bit more of it. So it looks great, I think. Sewed out really nicely. We were able to keep everybody nice and lined up. Let's get our lighting back. A little different. There you go. Can you see that real good? Okay, so what I want to do is if you want to do this as fills for certain areas, even for a small area, what I'd like is I think it's fun if we can align that on one of the existing ribbons. So let's make a little mark. And Donna has some pretty amazing information in here, like her drawings and everything else. I wanna show you, this is what we're gonna go for. Notice that the little dip of the ribbon right there kind of fits snugly right in that little divot right there. How do you align that? This is the center of the ribbon where the little feet hooks are, and I could just make a center line on one of the ribbons, and that will get me lined up perfectly right in that spot. Okay, so let's do that. I'm just gonna mark it right here. We'll just mark the center line right there. And we'll also try to make it squared up to the existing seam. Once I get the line in there, 
All the other ones should pretty much line up without a problem. If you feel like you might need an extra honesty line, you can always put one in, but I, I think that this will be enough for us. So I'm just gonna mark this first one right in the center right there of these two ribbons, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get that back out. Where'd he go? Oh, he's, <laughs> he's way over here. All right, get our thread out of there, get this cut. So I think it's gonna look really fun. This is a very pretty design. And we kind of started our first one right here, half on and half off. If you remember, we were kind of like this. Well, now we're not gonna be half on and half off. We're gonna be all the way on. This line, let me show you, right? Let's get some paper up here. To line this up, where's my line? This line right there. Can you see it? It's really hard to see, I think, but there is a line right there on the bottom. It's a straight line, and there's one on this side right there as well. That line needs to align right along the top of these ribbons right here. That's how you're gonna fit that in by lining that line up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I have a center position right here in the center, and I've got the reference lines that we just said we were gonna line up, so I'm gonna get those lined up, and then we'll be ready to sew. So again, trying to pick up that bobbin thread always, keep those threads on the top. I do like them to be underneath, but I'm pretty much aligned, so I think I'm just gonna let it stay where it is for the moment and get myself aligned right there. Okay, let's sew. Little tacking right here, just making sure that that's nice and secure. So it's kind of a bulky seam right there, so we're gonna have to navigate that each time. All right, there we go, and then this part is actually so easy because now I've got all the reference lines that I need. I've got a center line and I've got these two lines lined right up at the top. And that is gonna make it very easy for me to keep this ribbon lined up exactly where I want it to be. Always make sure that your needle stop doesn't move when you're making any adjustments. Okay, that's important. We'll just scoot over and again I'm just lining that center position right up where that stitching is and then maybe making a little bit of an adjustment if I need to So I really like how easy the lines are to use, especially if I was gonna do this. I honestly, I think I would like this if it was bigger too, so that I could do a nice, very large fill like this. I think it will look awesome. So this is what we're getting so far. We're just stacking them up so that this is kind of right in there. If you wanted it tighter, you could probably get it a little bit tighter. Um, looks like there's maybe like a stitch or so in between. I'm not worried about it. I don't feel like I need to have it super tight. But, you know, if you wanted them touching, you could make them touching. Okay. I think we only have two more. So we'll finish that up so you can basically see the whole thing, how it's gonna look. I'm not getting myself lined up as much as I need to, so I'm gonna adjust this last one so I can get a little better alignment. He's kind of hanging down a little bit more than I want. So I think I'll take one stitch above 
and try to get realigned a little better. All right, and we're done and we're outside of our boundary. We'll get that thread right out of there. So what do you think? That could be a fun fill, don't you think? It is a classic option. So this is what we get with that doubled up. And you can see that texture is awesome, right? So we could stack that up. That's, that's a great fill all by itself. And, you know, pretty easy to use and very easy to line it up. Let's go ahead and cut some threads and we'll move on to the next one. All right, got some threads everywhere. Okay, so let's see, we got a couple more spaces that we've got. Um, I did leave a couple of these spaces. I wasn't sure how much time we would have, but I absolutely love this flourish that she's got in this set. And I wanted to show you a couple of ways that we can use it. So let me grab it out. It's really tiny and awesome. When I sew this, you could sew following the bottom line but I think it looks much more dramatic on this outer line. So this is your needle reference right there where you would line it up. So for example, if we're sewing it along here, you're gonna line this up right on that, right? That's your needle reference line as we go along. The dimensions for this, it's three and a half inches this way, but it's only stitching up a half inch. It's very narrow. So let's go ahead and we'll put one of these rows in and we'll just start from this edge because this will just stitch right off of the uh, outside boundary. So we'll line it up right there. Again, this is a little bit of a bulky spot right here where we're starting. So I'll go ahead and tack that in before we start and make sure that I can move smoothly. It is tricky when you have a lot of seams intersecting to sew over that. I'm the first person that's gonna agree that that is a pain in the boot. Something that you can do to really manage that is construction of your quilt matters. Try to navigate those seams the best you can when you're in that construction phase rather than trying to navigate them when you're in the quilting phase. It's much better if you can do some of that navigation ahead of time. Oh, this thread does not want to let me grab it. It's so annoying. There we go. Okay, I got it. Now I want to line it up and show you what I want. I want this point to go that way, okay? So I've got to make sure that I've got it all lined up for that. So I'm at A, and let me show you. Let's sew towards you so you can see better. There's a little reference line right here, right there, and right on this side. So it's on both sides of this little dip on each side. This is like a bracket. And if I sew on the bottom, the bracket is very, very subtle. Whereas if I sew on the top part right here, it's a lot more dramatic. But that's a very deep out, outer curve edge right there that you've got to navigate, okay? So I'm right in my seam line right there. Just get this nice and smooth, fold that up so I can move easily, and I'm just going to scoot this over, and then again, line it up. So as I'm going around here, it's easy, but right here, this is an outside corner. So as you're doing that part of the design, you're going to have to just go a little bit more slowly and keep the foot hugging right there, right into the dip, and then getting out of that dip. Okay? So then same thing, scoot over and then line it up. Okay, it's a small template. It's got amazing and easy reference lines, very easy to use. And wait till you see how pretty this design is. I love it. I really actually want it to be bigger, deeper, but I love it. So I have to ask Donna if she has another one that's bigger than this. It just looks so fancy. You know me, I like fancy. I want fancy, fancy. 
So this is actually, I did not plan this, but it's gonna actually fit perfectly right in here. So I'm just gonna go like that and right out of that dip. Okay. And just to get into the boundary, I'll just line it up and just go like that. We'll just sit, stitch right into the boundary. Because I want these to be aligned parallel, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the other side. So I'm gonna cut my threads and then realign it. When I lined up my design, I made one inch markings, okay? That's what these purple lines are. They're one inch. Um, I could scoot it up and flip it around, but I want spaced lines and I want them to line up exactly. So I'm gonna start back over here because this is my reference line that I used. So I, I'm gonna just start from there. And that way I don't have to turn the quilt also, you know, if, if the quilt has any, any issues, you know, I can just leave it here. Mine is not so big. If I wanted to just realign the ruler and scoot up from that same side, then I would maybe want to make a few honesty lines. The template sews out at three and a half inches. So you could always make some reference lines that are three and a half inches apart if you wanted to do that. So I'm right in my line again, and I think I've got my threads under there. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Oh, well, I'm just gonna keep sewing. This center line right here should be lined up on the little divot right here. So I'm gonna just gonna draw him in so you can maybe see that a little better. Let's give you some nice lighting right there so we can make that better for you. How's that? Any better? He sews just like this, right there. Okay, that's the, the stitch line that I just did right here. We'll just kind of mark it in a little bit so you can see it better. So there's a line, a reference line on the template that I can line up right through that little V right there. That's how I'm gonna keep these successive rows lined up is I'm gonna use that to line it up. So it's right on the V and now I'm just gonna stack another one right on top of it. So I marked those one inch lines so that I could keep my lines parallel because I think it needs that if I wanted that. If I want them parallel, I think you need a little bit of extra lines to do it. And you can see this is gonna sew out pretty fast. The alignment takes just a few seconds. You know, I'm looking at the line below and I'm getting it right on that purple line and then I'm ready to sew. Again, and it's lining up pretty nicely. So there's, there's not a big draw in on this side like there is on some of the curvier ones. This is just a little bit more linear in nature, so it doesn't give as much of a draw in. You don't have to make as many adjustments as you would on some of the curvier stuff. Okay, oh, it's fitting very nicely. Up in the dip, gently coming out of that dip and going around the curve, and then we'll just Mark it a little bit more. All right, let's see if we can do what some of you guys were asking. Can I just go back the other way? Probably we can. I don't see any reason why we can't, but I, I like to align it the same on that one side just because I know where I'm starting. But we already know what line that we need, so let's just put it in and we'll see if we can just go from that other side. Do I have to turn the quilt? No, I don't. I turn it for you because I want you to be able to see. So I'm gonna line it up on the purple line and I'm gonna get this little mark right there. It's right through my little pointy right there. So that's the alignment that we're gonna use right there. Okay, and then we don't have to flip it. Somebody mentioned flipping. Um, what we need here is we need to get in, so we got to scoot up a little bit to get this lined up. Okay, that's what we need. So that's where the template's going to line up, and we need to be able to get 
a little bit in. It's in that seam allowance right there. So let's scoot up just a little bit more. This line at A should line right up with the bottom. So I do have the reference lines that I need. I'm right here on the center line and my little A right there, which is the part that comes down, is lined up right with the two little A's right there. So I'll just sew over, get into my purple line, and now I can just come back lining everybody up. And if I need to smush a little bit, looks like I do, I'm right on this reference line right there and I'm ready to sew. So I don't necessarily have to come back, but it, then it's more marking, stuff like that. You're gonna have to do a little bit more work essentially to get all the information that you need to line it up on that side. But it wasn't that hard. So now the quilt is kind of hanging down in my lap, so it's heavier, can you tell? So I'm gonna smush and get them lined right up. I'm right on my purple line, and here we go. Right into the little cup, coming out and going around that curve, right into the foot stop, and then just scoot down. Tuck your foot in, make sure you're aligned. I'm aligned on the purple line here and right on that center line, and if I need to smush, this is a place where you would smush. How did I decide that I wanted a one inch spacing? Anybody know? You guys wanna think about that? I'll give you some more information to help you think about it. This design sews a half inch wide. From that side to that side, it's a half inch. The length is three and a half. So if I move up one inch, it's gonna give me a one inch space, but the depth of this design is not really deep anyway. So as the twists and turns happen, you're not gonna get a lot of deep curves that are you know, tracking into one another. It's fairly gentle. So I didn't wanna make a big gap that would really separate them. I want them to look like they're gonna to work together. So let's go ahead and turn it so you can kind of see what we're getting so far, because it is so pretty. Do you guys see that? Is that not gorgeous? I absolutely think this is such a beautiful template. I'm a little bit jealous I didn't think of it first <laughs> or all, at all, but I'm really excited that Donna made it because this is very much speaking to me. It's definitely my uh, quilty love language and I'm really excited to be able to do some more with this. And she has a really beautiful border that she's created with this too that's in the directions where basically you just start from one side and as you cross over to the other side, it creates like a little heart. Let me see if I can grab it and just show you the picture. Oh, it's way back there. Look at that, right? So she's just starting from this corner and going that way, and then starting from this corner and going that way. And what I would do in this case, if you wanted this corner, I would start in the corner and just work as many evenly sets as you can towards the middle. And then if, if they don't match, you can either make them cross over a little bit if you need to, or just stop short of the center. And that way you're gonna get this really cool corner. And then these designs are mirrored. You can tell like this is the little point going out and this is the little point going that way. So this would be a mirror image where you're kind of creating this little hourglass in the center, which I think is really pretty. What we're doing is basically this, we didn't double it up, we just created a space. But you could put a quarter inch echo if you wanted to, and then you would get basically the same exact design. Okay, so let's just finish up that line because we are basically almost done. Oh, and so right here, I can, for me, I have to actually lift up my needle in order to lift up my foot to get this out of the way. I'll use my knee lift, and if I wanted to, I can just scoot the thread right out of there. I'll just flip this over, and I'm gonna sew right up to my next one inch line, right in the ditch here, and then I'll be perfectly lined up for the next row. Okay, again, needle up and foot up for me, and then the little thread slot would allow you to just put your thread right in there, seat your foot, and then I would always position your needle before you start messing around with the template because we want the foot to be anchored. 
So now I'm can line everything back up again, right on that same line. And we'll just do this last line. And that's pretty much where I think we'll leave it today. So I hope you had fun. What do you think of, of Donna's designs? Can you give her a shout out? I would love it if we can just share that. I know she's had some uh, challenges. She had eye surgery and foot surgery. She probably in, you know, quilt her heck, right? Fortunately, it's the holidays, so maybe she can just take some time and get well and relax. But she has some amazing ideas, and I'm very excited to be able to share those with you. So I hope that you'll let her know that we appreciate her. You can tag her by just putting her name in there if you want to, telling her what you liked today and what's your favorite. She's got, um, again, the winding ways. We didn't really do very much with that this time. Um, if you want to see it, I know she's got her Donna McCauley classroom. So she has definitely done some stuff with the winding ways herself. I'm sure that those videos are probably out there. I don't know exactly where, but you can always check in with her, and I'm sure that she would be able to tell you. And then in addition to that, those are available in many different sizes. So those are something you could use for easy all-over quilting of a large quilt or a small space. And then these are more border. Some of the ones we showed you today are maybe a little bit more border, but definitely the curvy diamond is big enough to be something that could be used for an all over. And it has that classic nature to it with that um, sort of cathedral, the arcs and everything. And then I'll show you one more thing when I put this down, I'm gonna cut this. The reason that I created a little bit of space is one of the things that So Steady is trying to also work towards is maybe providing some integrated content. Anne Moore does a lot of free motion along with her you know, quilting process. And usually I do some kind of free motion as well. And we're gonna maybe free motion in some, inside some of these lines, right? That'd be a fun thing to put some kind of little fill alternating. So fill, open, fill, open type of thing. And that would create a lot of tension right there. So I hope you guys had fun. We are right at the end of our time. I'll just bring the quilt out a little bit so that we can show the design just a little bit more. What I was planning for this side is instead of using this template in this direction, I was planning to use it in this direction and actually scoot up on these travel lines. So basically you would do one and you would scoot up and you do another one and scoot up and another one and scoot up. So this would be more of a border fill like that. Um, but lots and lots of options in this design set to do so many different things. Even just making a frame around a block, I think this would make an amazing frame. If you had some center block, you can use that as a little frame around that. So. Pretty awesome. Okay, let's see, we'll scoot out. Let's give you a little bit wider view of the quilt itself. And we'll change our lighting a little bit. Oh, I don't know, I'll just pick it up. Hang on, just give me one second. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. There we go. Okay, here you go. So now you'll be able to see a little bit more of the quilt. Time Warner, I'm so glad it was a relaxing afternoon. I'm gonna go relax after I hang up. <laughs> but there you go, you can see it. So we just did a lot of fun, different designs. They've got some fun texture in there, just different ways to use that set. Looks like I got space for another one. And then here's those two different ones with the curvy diamonds, both the, just the diamond itself with sort of the oval. And then right there, you've got that cathedral type of design. I want to remind you that next week, next weekend is Thanksgiving weekend and I will not be broadcasting. I won't have free motion Fridays and I also will not be broadcasting on Sunday. I hope that you will be hanging out with your family and just having a great time and not feel like you need to be here. So hopefully, and if you want to be here, I got lots of stuff for you on YouTube. So you're not going to be left alone if you, if you don't want to be. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I'm not sure I answered all the questions since Honey wasn't checking. I'll go back through and um, just add some answers to any questions if anybody has any. But have a great, great weekend and happy Thanksgiving. Bye, guys.